Too many Minnesotans feel crushed by tens of thousands of dollars in student debt. The repayment plan that I am, I'm on has me scheduled to pay off my student loans the year that I retire. Some put off having kids or buying homes, and now there are proposals to ease some of the burden. But how much do we owe in student loans, and how did we get here? Good question. Here's Heather Brown. I'm going to throw out a bunch of big numbers at you because this is big. The first one is 43 million Americans. That's how many people have some kind of student debt. It's one in every six adults. The next number, $1.6 trillion. That's the total amount of student debt here in the U.S. It's less than our mortgages, but it's more than our credit cards and our car loans. Then check this one out. That's up from $480 billion in 2006. So for the average undergrad, that's about $29,000. And for the average graduate student, that's $66,000. This is not something that all of a sudden just happened. It didn't happen because young people were being irresponsible, though maybe some were. It didn't happen just because colleges were raising tuition, all the costs are going up. Joyce Sarita researches family finance at the U of M. So what did happen? Uh, that's a good question. In the 90s, the government made it easier to get student loans. The idea was to get more people who wouldn't have the chance to go to college to be able to go. And it worked. Because everybody was thinking that, no problem, you get a college degree, you get a good job, you pay it back. And then the financial crisis in 2008 hit, and a lot of students were graduating from college and not able to find a job. Making it harder to pay off debts. The way our system is set up right now, the interest on those student loans accumulates. And if someone can't make the full payment, Cerrito has seen. That $10,000 could easily become $21,000. This was all happening as tuition rose faster than inflation. Parents borrowed more. That's tripled in the past 25 years. Loans for for-profit schools increased. And back to that grad school debt, that's really where you've seen the biggest jumps, where the undergrad borrowing has stayed relatively constant. We didn't get here overnight. It took us a good 30 years to get here. And so any solution to get us out of this is going to be complex and delicate to move forward. Heather Brown, WCCO 4 News. Experts say beyond debating canceling student debt, we need to talk about how the interest operates on these loans, the high cost of college, and who benefits from wiping out student debt. Is it professionals with grad degrees who can possibly pay or those under significant financial strain?